Hi guys, like probably most of you watching this video, you're a DJ and you're facing the same uh, troubleshooting as me, which is you have a controller, for my part, the DDGSZ, linked to Serato, and you like to use the samples. So usually you go on samples, you already put some samples, and once you press the button, it's shooting the samples, cool. Um, that's a cool thing. And Serato offers you uh, four blanks of eight samples. Um, so it, it might be enough for uh, the beginning, but after some point, maybe you're like me, you're greedy and you want much more samples. So after some researches, it, uh, it turned out that um, Serato does not make, uh, doesn't have a project to make new uh, increase on the, um, on the program to add more samples. So, thanks to the shop Sonovant in Paris, I came out with the solution. I bought a drum pad, and uh, with Serato, I'm gonna play uh, more samples. So, to give you an example, let's say I'm playing a song, which is on the channel, uh, this is the two rights, uh, channel two. Um, I can put more samples. Coming out from the channel four. So, so how to do that? As you can see, I have a lot here, uh, eight by eight, and this is user. I can also have here and here. I didn't use it yet, but it's the same process. I'm gonna show you how I did. So first of all, what is this pad? This is the Launchpad Mini from Novation. This is the Cool Launchpad Mini MK3. Of course, it's small compared to the CD player, but you can buy a bigger, a bigger one, and it can be actually any MIDI controller, but it has to be um, a launchpad one. So what I did technically, um, this is connected to the computer to Ableton. So yeah, I have to use another program, Ableton. Um, then Ableton is sending the his sound on the controller to channel 4 on my case but it can be any one and then the controller is sending it back to uh, serato and serato sending back to here and then it's going to the speakers it's a big process um, so you might need a powerful computer as you see as you may see mine is the last Mac macbook pro the latest one at least, um, so it's powerful enough, but if you have a weak computer saturated or whatsoever, it will be complicated. So, to do that, um, first of all, once you uh, bought these and connect it to the computer, you have to, whoops, don't press buttons at the same time, you have to connect it to a uh, live button. I'm going to show you how I did because that was a really tricky part for me. So, first of all, make sure it's connected and uh, your pad is on. Oh yeah, first thing you have to do is go to the website. So in my case, it's uh, novationmusic.com because from here I will download the program to, uh, let's say, tune it, okay? Oops, sorry, one of my fingers on the camera. So from the website, you need to download either or you download the program to to use it or from the website you can also um let's say upgrade it um but i prefer to have the program on mine so technically what i did is to go on uh, support download then i click on my software scroll down and this is it this is a component standalone or mac or windows depending where you are and you download it from here. This is a program, I'll show you now. I'm gonna open it. This is a program that allows you to control uh, to, and to assign all the MIDI mapping stuff from all the, the product that did. So in my case, it's a Launchpad Mini. And from that windows, you're gonna go on create a custom mode. So yeah, you have your iPad, your iPad, sorry, your pad. <laughs> And from here, you can put many options. Oops. You have 
faders, you have a keyboard, okay, yeah, keyboard, drum grid, you can uh, assign CC button. Uh, for the jingle, for the samples, the m my preference went to MIDI note. So what you have to do is that you click on MIDI note and put it wherever you want. Then you click on it, on the settings, you have the note, the octave, keep the momentary for uh, the pad mode and the uh, channel one for MIDI channel. Um, and then you put them on a color and you fill all of them with different one. Once you did it, you send it to the launch pad and then you send it either to the one, two, three, basically. Up. The one, two, three, this is it. This is one, two, three. It's all the same, it's right? The drum case and user because by default it's like this, but you can make all of well, like this. So once you click on three, the um, drum pad will up, uh, update. I just don't want to keep, whoopsie. No, sorry. I don't want to keep mine. I save mine, which is here. But it's the same thing, you see, I put um, MIDI note everywhere. And each of them, as you see on each line, the note is changing. See here, the note is changing. And on each row is the same note, but different octave. So I'm making sure all the notes are different. It doesn't matter the order technically. But in our case, just for jingles, samples, we don't need, we just need them to be different. And if you do the same for uh, as I did for user and you also want to do, do it the same with key and drums you can do it can, and you just have to change the channel let's say channel 1 for uh, I don't know, user, channel 2 for key, channel 4 for dreams, for drums just make sure every each of them is different so once you did that and that you send it to launchpad to the 3 okay I did it already um, your drum pad is um, with a beautiful colors. Now you can use it with a live Ableton. So from live Ableton, I'm not starting from scratch, but I'll show you all the steps. First of all, you're gonna have to go to live references, click on the MIDI uh, sync tab and make sure launch pad is selected here. So on the control surface, you might have a lot of things, the launch pad, the launch pad mini. Of course, in your case, in my case, sorry, it's launch pad mini. For you, it can be anything else. Sorry, the video is moving a lot on my hand. Um, on the input, make sure you are taking the um, DAO. And on the output is the DAO as well. It's not the mini. Then from here, takeover mode uh, the pickup and then down um, as you may see I have a lot of up of a MIDI port the DGL the DDGS there of course and then uh, four for launch pad two for the input two for the output make sure each of them is on for track and for uh, remote that's the first step so once you did that uh, if you click on any button here, every time I'm pressing is uh, yellow up. It means okay, I'm able to. I'm receiving a MIDI um, signal, and when it's orange, just down says. It means okay, I got a MIDI signal, and I have um, a task to do to that one. So what I did is I create, as you see, many uh, jingles here. And each of them, I map them. So I, it's, it's just, sorry, it's just the audio. Um, I do this, cup, right button, uh, insert audio track. So that's an audio track with nothing here. And I just put uh, my MP3 or wave or whatsoever in it. And then after, from uh, here, I click on MIDI. I click on, okay, I already did it, but technically I click on the first one and I'm saying to Ableton, okay, um, I click here, so I, the MIDI signal you will receive will be assigned from here. So once you click on something, 
it doesn't have to be uh, you see here i have um, um sorry i have um oh, i forgot the names my bad i have a clip <laughs> i have a clip but i uh, can be also nothing once you click it you have to click wherever you want for example here when i'm clicking here ableton will see okay the thing that the guy selected will be linked to the button that he just pressed so after you see it's one slash c1 one slash c2 it means okay you are mapped here so yeah that's it for that so now every time i'm gonna press a button it will it's like if it's gonna click on a play of any of the samples here but it's not over um something you have to do is for any samples actually all of them is the same but any samples here as you see first of all you are gonna have to make sure the warp is not on because it will depend on the bpm set it here which is big for me 999 the maximum i will explain to you later why but if you uh, map it for example 120 bpms your sample might be my read slow or faster than um, what it actually is and in my case i don't want so take off the map the warp sorry um here the quantization you put it to now this is really important because this is exactly what i said if you um uh, if you're not familiar with ableton just do like i did if you're familiar you have to know that uh, once you play the clip they are you know um what you play is not really playing straight ahead it's playing each um, two bars like uh, there is a calcul of, of of tempo and it's launching on the same tempo i don't know if i'm explaining myself well but technically clicking here you are making sure that once you pred you press sorry your pad the sound will go straight you don't have to wait to to launch it um, this button also is really important trigger gate toggle. okay the trigger mode sorry i'm not really really not familiar so trigger mode every time i play is going to play the jingle from the beginning to the end and if i re if if i uh, play it many times it's just gonna uh, play again that's a trigger mode you have the gate mode the gate mode technically is the jingle gonna play as long as my finger is on it so if i do if I want to play it, I have to keep play it, to keep press, sorry. That's the gate mode. Um, and the toggle mode is what I was trying to explain before. So if I play, if I press one time, it's going to play from the beginning to the end, and that's going to still be activated. And if I press again, uh, and it's actually playing, it's going to stop it. So for example, play and stop when it's finished. And if I Pray. and press again but it's not finished it's gonna stop it so that's what's uh, that's what's happening now it's playing it's playing i press it's finishing so that's the um, the toggle mode so depending on the jingles you want for example for my the last the long one i like to put on toggle then i can stop it when i when i want but for the short one i like to put on a trigger for example uh, this kind of uh, I think it's more interesting for this kind of sound to have a trigger mode and um and well the gate um well you will see it's, like, it's actually exactly the same as serato when you have a, a jingle here and you click on here oh no it's here sorry this is it so it is three mode is exactly the same as the three mode go back to my company, to, sorry, to my Ableton. Okay, so that's the setup, really important, and make sure, of course, it, this is obvious, but on your jingle, here, on your sample, you start really from the beginning, you know? You don't have a blank, because if you have a blank of one second, every time you're gonna press the button, you will have one second blank, and after the jingle, which is not what you guys want, but of course, this is obvious. Uh, I think I forgot nothing. For, of course, from here you can uh, check the volume, you can uh, change the pitch with the transpose. 
in my case, um, all the samples, I edit them one by one. I put them on a separate folder and uh, I'm making sure this is, uh, you know, for example, if I have a longer samples, I cut it. So I have just a sample of a cut it, uh, sound. Then I'm sure there is no parasite noises or whatever after or before. And I also normalize all of them. Then they have the volume I want. Once you did that, um, this is not finished. There's another option that also took me quite a time. You go to our live preferences and audio here. And audio, ugh, sorry, moving again. Um, doesn't matter the input uh, device, but you have to make sure the output is uh, DDGSZ. I mean, your controller is my case, DDGSZ, of course. Um, because you want the sound of live to go straight to the controller. All right. And once you did that, you click on output config and you select this uh, for here or the mono if you want, but in my case, the row. Why that? Because my controller here has a four channel. I'm using mostly these two here for mixing. Sometimes it's happening that I'm using an extra one for, um, well, for the mixing, you know. But I want my samples to be sent here. By default, they will be sent on the, on the channel one. But I wanted to send them on the channel four, then I have them uh, separately from uh, my, um, my two track playing. So by selecting here, the output config, by selecting this four here, I'm saying to my program Ableton, okay, dude, um, you have different options to send them. So on the master here, you can do, of course, for each of the row here, but for the master here, you have this queue out. This is technically, first one is the channel one, channel two, channel three, channel four, and of course, make sure, I mean, take the both. Huh? In my case, uh, it's the four. So on the both queue out and master out, I'm selecting the four. So for, for here, I will make sure that my samples are played here on the four. Um, I think I forgot nothing. Uh, if there is anything coming to my mind, uh, I will write down on the comment of the video. I uh, hope it uh, helped some of you guys and um, keep up the good work. Ciao.